All right. So I'm happy to say that question uh, 39 is resolved. And we will go over the code in this video. So let's uh, first make this a little smaller. Okay, and let's uh, review question 39. Write a Java program to create and display a unique three-digit number using one, two, three, and four. Also count how many three-digit numbers are there. Uh, the expected output should look like this. One, two, three, one, two, four, four, three, one, four, three, two. Total number of three-digit no numbers is 24. Now, if you remember during my last video, I misunderstood the question. I didn't realize that this was the pattern to follow. And I made another program, uh, which you guys know as the number generator program. But now I have the correct one. So I also said that I will modify my number generator program to get the right answer for question 39. And so that's what I did. This is my number generating program. And you, you remember that I have this problem where I was using the add method to add the indexes of the num string array into the random set set individually because otherwise I would get a hash code and that value. Well, I resolve that when I modify the code because I learned a couple of tricks. Well, not tricks, but tools. And I resolve that by using the uh, add all method from the collections class from the collections frames framework, which actually takes all the content of the secondary argument and into the uh, set or collection on that is given as a first argument. So that's a result. All right, and now let's make this bigger so that we can uh, evaluate the code. Okay, and this way you can better understand what is going on. All right, so now that we have it, uh, let's go ahead and let's see. Distraction free mode. There we go. Okay, so here's what the code is. All the code is within uh, the class and within this method right here. Uh, there are no <coughs> code, there is no code outside of this method. And I use the discipline learned from the How NASA Codes uh, error free, which is you declare variables only when you need them or just before you need them, as opposed to making a list of variables outside of the class or within the class and outside of the main method. I don't have a main method here, as you can see. And then, and then using them later now. As you can see, there are tons of code that is only declared and initialized within the method. Very well. So this is what I did. Um, I used the set, which I uh, I declare right here. Okay, I didn't initialize it with any content. Then I declare a string that is an array of type string. Uh, you know what? I should get the lines of here to show up. All right, the other lines will show in presentation mode, but they don't. All right, sorry guys, we need to exit presentation though. Because I need the lines. I need the lines. All right, um, so I need the lines. And uh, does this not have to show here? Okay. Sorry, I need the lines. So we can discuss this better. So anyway. Um, over here on line six is my method within this class. Okay, and this is a little distracting right here. So I'll just push it all the way down. All right, so this is the class right here. So line 34 to line 34. And all the code that there will be in this class is within this one element, which is the method on line five. All code is within that. So I declare also an array list, or let's call it just list. And it is declared, but it's not initialized with any content. Then I use a while loop so that I can continue to process my logic, right, with this code over here from line 10 and on until I have the desired number of uh, three-digit numbers. And uh, so I am going to deposit 
every three digit number in my list called random list. So until that random list has 24 elements in it, I'm going to keep using my logic to create those elements. All right. So what did I do to create those elements? I used the for loop. I created the index, which, you know, is only uh, evaluated once in a for loop. Then this index will be increased in value um, uh, progressively until we reach the length of non string, which is the same as the size of non string, which with three elements, it means it's three. So it's three elements. And then <clears throat> this is how the index value is increased. As you know, how for loop works, it first uh, evaluates the uh, here, this code. And this condition, then it runs the code outside of the for loop or nested within the for loop, I should say. And then after it runs the code next to within the for loop, then it checks, uh, follows this operation. This operation can be whatever you want. Of course, I made it uh, that the index is increased. All right, so that we can account for each position of uh, the indexes within the num string uh, array. Let's just call it num string. Now, I use an instance of the random class. I'll quickly show you here what it does. The random class or an instance of this class is used to generate a string of the random numbers. So it creates random numbers. Now I'm using numbers one through four, okay? So I make sure, remember that this code is modified, is my original code modified, so I didn't use just the numbers. I just used what the original code had. And this answer is my unique answer. I did not read any other answers online. This is all from here and with prayers to Jesus Christ. So, uh, the random class, uh, I made an instance of the random class, which is to say an object. And this object creates numbers. I use the next int method from the random class, which you'll see right here has a couple of uh, implementations. I use this one, the second one. When you add a bound to it, uh, it gives me numbers between zero inclusive and the bound exclusive. Meaning if I give it four, as I did here, it will give me numbers from zero to three because the bound is exclusive. Now, how do I bring that from to how do I make it uh, that the numbers are from one to four by adding one to whatever results I get? All right. So the first iteration of the of the for loop goes in. Index is zero. The random number is created. Then I use the the integer wrapper class and its method foo string so that I can convert the random number into a string and then deposit that string into the string variable digit which is here, it's a, it's a variable type string. Then the code checks if index is zero, of course it is zero. Okay, now one quick tip, our arrays uh, start their indexes at zero. So this is not one, two, and three on line seven, this is zero, one, and two. Okay, so as uh, the for loop runs, it goes through the first loop, checks to see if index is zero, it is, and it deposits whatever random number digit created, right, was deposited in digit, uh, excuse me, in digit. And then it escapes uh, or it terminates that loop and increases index. Then the second it, uh, uh, loop, it checks for if index is one, of course, it is went from zero to one, it was increased. So it checks if line 15 is true. If index is one and, this is the end symbol to check, on uh, different a uh, couple of conditions as opposed to just one if index is one and the number uh at index one is equals to zero which it is because i initialize my array all three positions that is all three indexes to zero okay so this first lines of codes that have the zero will always be true okay so and index one minus one that is to say zero is not equals to digit. This symbol right here in Java uh, turns the uh, meaning of a co of, of a code to its counterpart. So equals means not equals when you put this sign in front of it. Okay. So is it not equal to digit? Then deposit digit into that index one. If it's not so then this will skip this code and we'll check the next else if statement. If index is one, and of course the first index one is zero, the value, and the number string is equal to 
index minus one, meaning that digit and the number that was deposited originally here on line one is the same, then this is brilliant. I love this here. Then reset the index to one minus one, meaning to zero, and then escape the loop. So it terminate, terminates that loop and then increases index again back from zero to one. Okay. And then it, instead of checking here at zero, because it was increased again to one, it will check here, right? It will skip here. Index is not zero. So we'll skip that. Then it will check here again. And it will keep doing this until this is true. If this is not true, this is what will happen. It will be increased again and it will run and check again if this condition is true. If this condition is true, then on line 16, the digit will be deposited into index one. And this is how we know we're always going to get two different digits in index one and in index, in index zero and in index one. Okay, so then that loop is escaped or finished. Then the for loop continues on to the next loop. Remember, this was index one. This is supposed to go up to index two. Zero, one, and two, that's size three, three numbers. So index is increased to two and a similar uh, logic will take place here. If index two is equal to zero, which again, it always is because all three indexes were initialized to zero. Now these numbers are no longer zero because I just deposited uh, numbers there, right? But the last one is still zero because we just went to index number two. So index is zero, yes. And uh, the index two minus one, meaning one, this one here, is not equal to digit. Okay, meaning the new number generated is not equal to digit because remember each loop generates a new random number because the random number instance is within nested within the for loop. Okay, so with each loop, the random number generator generates a random digit between one and four. Okay, so if this, um, if 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 index two is equal to zero and index two minus one minus one is, is not equal to digit and index two minus two minus index zero, the original index is not equal to digit, then deposit digit into index. Now let's jump line 21, 22, and 23 to explain what happens. First, keep it simple, to keep it simple. If this is not true, if this is not true, then this will be true. And what this second if else if statement says is, because if this is not true, then it will skip codes from lines of code from 20 to 23. So the else if statement that begins on line 24, what the system will do is it will check. Okay, so index is zero. Yes, remember, these are always true. And num string index does equal digit. Remember that this symbol here does not equal. So without it, it means it does equal digit or index one, uh, two minus two does equal digit. So if either one equals digit, if the numbers deposited here or here equals the new number that will be deposited here, okay, then we're going to decrease index by one. And instead of it's two, we're gonna reset it to one. The loop is going to escape and the for loop will then execute this operation, which is to increase index from one back to two so that then when it goes through the if and else if statements these statements with the index equal to two will be again reviewed until this right here is true it will continue to do so now when this is true and this is where the rest of the magic happens okay when this is true we use the collect at all collections as opposed to the uh let's go back the add uh method to, uh, and we don't add it in each index, as you can see with a, the with a concatenation symbol, okay? We don't add each index separately. We use the add all from the collections uh, framework. And now let me show you. This is the collections class that is within the collections framework. As you can see the collections framework, okay? This is the collections class. And here is the method. Now this method uses generics, as you can see by the T, okay? We're not gonna go into that. For the sake of this video explanation, there's, there's no need to go into it. Okay, the add all method adds all of the specified element to the specified collection. Now the specified collection is either the array, the list, or the set, which is the first argument, as you see before the comma right here. You see the comma right there. 
is the collection, the specified collection. And this is the specified element, which again, uses generics by, you can see by the indication of the T right there, it uses generics. So it could be any type of element into any type of collection. Okay, so I use that implementation of the add all, add all method from the collections class to feed, you can see the, the comma right here, separating the two arguments. My first argument is my collection, which is a set. My second argument is the array, the num string array, which using a method of the arrays class, I'm converting all three numbers into a single number. Because remember, within that array, that's, there's three elements. But here, I'm making those three of those three elements one string, one unit. Okay, that's what the two string method will do. And so I'm going to add it to the random set, not as three elements, but as one. Okay, that's what this line of code on, on 21, line 21 would do. After I add all the elements of the num string array to set, now imagine we've gone through it five times. So there's at least um, each, each iteration of the for loop will add a full set of three numbers here. So if we go through the for loop, um, at least uh, uh, five times uh, where we've generated a five series of numbers, right? Five series of three digit numbers. Then there's five sets right here within my set. Now, remember that random list was declared here, but not initialized, meaning I didn't add any context. So now what we're going to do is it initialize, is, um, initialize it here. So it was declared on the top on line eight, but it is going to be initialized here. Now, what we do is we take the contents of the set, which I just deposited here, and initialize the array with the contents of the set. They go into the list. They'll go into the list. One, one uh, quality of the set is that the sets do not print things in order, but the list can uh, print, it print its contents in order. For that, we use a code here in line 28 the sort code for the collections. Um, and uh, we use random lists from 922 to sort the elements within that list. Now, once we do that, I do another thing here. Let's go back to the arrays. You see the arrays? There is a thing called a fill method in the arrays class. So let's go back to the arrays class. OK, let's go. Of all the interesting methods in the arrays class, I always recommend going back to the Oracle website. That's 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 the source. OK, so. As you can see, this is pretty interesting because the fields method is listed many times, and that means that there are many as many implementations of the field method, meaning it's overloaded. It has different signatures, okay, so that we can give it different arguments, and so it will return a different uh, returns based on the arguments that you give it. So depending on, on the argument, you'll be using a different implementation of the field method. Now, as you can see, there's one for characters, for doubles, for bytes, for bytes, for booleans, uh, for longs, and for short. And there are no from strings. But there is one for objects right here. There is the object and there's the value. And what this does is if you assign a specified object reference, this is the object reference right here, the value to each element of your specified array. This is the array. You can see by the brackets right here, object array of objects. Now, how does that apply to strings? That's because in Java, a string like that, like that zero included in the, uh, in the quotation marks is an object. Java treats strings as objects. Not only that, once you deposit anything at all into an array, like here, this array of strings, every element of an array is really an object. So even if you had ints in there, not a string, it will be treated as an object. An array is technically a list of objects, pun intended. So it is, it really is. So when I'm adding this string right here or anything else, as long as it's coming from the array, okay, or it came from an array, it is in fact an object. So I'm adding an object into an object array or an array of objects. So that's why I can use the strings with this implementation, uh, the object implementation of the fields method from the arrays class. Okay, here's a class arrays in Java, which is a subclass or object class 
which is a super class for every other class that you will ever create in Java. Okay, so what this does, again, it takes this element and it gives it to absolutely every single, oh, let me go back. It gives it to every single index of the array that you put here, okay, in the first argument. So if I put a one, it will fill every single spot with ones. But I want to reset it to zero because I want all this logic to always be true. Okay, and so when that happens, and we get, um, we are, and we are going back into the loop, the for loop ends, because it's three, and it checks again whether random list is size 24. And then if it's not, it will complete, it will, it will go over the same process. Now, if when random loop, uh, excuse me, when the random list right here through this code right here keeps being increased up to 24, then the while loop is going to escape, meaning it will end the while loop. Now, this is the for loop bracket and this is the while loop. So it will get out and then it will, the system will execute this code from line 27 to line 31. Okay. Um, I wanted to say something here and I completely forgot. Oh, here, let me, let me just, this line up above my head, okay, on line 17, that is highlighted right here. This is a uh, compile time message. And that compile time message says that this statement on line 17 is always true, okay? It's a compile time message. Some people call it an error, okay? Remember that this is just compile time. This, the system is supposing or presupposing what will happen. But at runtime, when the code is executed, digit will have a different value, and so will index one. Right now, because digit has a default value, okay, which is null for strings, and index zero has a de default value, which is also null for strings, well, the system thinks that the value in digit and index is the same, and technically it is true, but only because at compile time, they have the de facto value of null. But once I run the code, uh, index will be given a different value and equals will have a random number created by the instance of, uh, of the random class, that is the object RNG, okay, and this code. So at, comp at compile time, uh, at run time, this is going to be different. Okay, this will take a different value and this will go away. You got to keep that in mind. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. So now let's run the code and see if we get the answer. Okay, the answer should look like this. Let's run the code. Okay, here is my uh, class within the same, uh, here, main resource within the same package. So I can only I only need to use the name of the class and the name of the method because the method is static. As you can see right here, I don't have to create an instance of the class within the package. I can just use the name of the class. Now, if I was to a different package, this is a different package and this is a different class outside of the original package, right? So if I go to this class, then I have to use the name of the original package, which is W3 resource right here the name of the original class after the dot operator, okay? The dot operator is uh, the operator that means like location. So a W3 resource in the location within W3 resource in a place called 39, and now this dot inside 39 in a place, find a code that's called unique string, okay? That's what that means. So we can run either one of these and it will work. Okay, now let's close this. And let's run the number and see if we get the correct answer. Let's take a look. Okay. Now, while that's running, I can go back and show you this. Okay, this code. The, this is the collection, the sorts uh, method. Okay, this is the answer. We'll go back to that in a second. The sort uh, method from the collections uh, class. Let's go back here. And it sorts the specified list, which was in my case, the random list right here on line 28, into the natural ordering, ordering of its elements. You can go back and sort that for the sake of this video, we're, we're not going into it, okay? So here is 
the the here let me let's yeah let's uh, make this full screen okay so here is the order one two three one two four one three two one three four and so on here's the last two four three one four three two and the total number is 24. if you follow that order okay as specified here it's impossible to get more than 24 numbers from a pool of four digits so if i was to modify the code okay and and i and then i make this 25 for instance the code will run forever because you cannot get more than 24 uh, three digit sets from a pool of four numbers it's impossible okay so that's how that's uh, the answer and as you can see we were successful all right thank you for accompanying me in this video sorry for the long video just i had to explain all uh, each logic each step of the logic